So guys, we have just arrived back into Dublin. We're going to be spending the next 48 hours stealth camping our way around the city. And I just hope that it goes better than it did the last time we were here. I don't know, man. It just feels, feels a little bit dodgy. We are Gemma and Campbell, and this is our home on wheels, Ellie the Eldest. We're currently touring around Ireland's most beautiful road trip, the Wild Atlantic Way, driving 1,500 miles along its rugged western coastline. This week you join us as we make a quick trip east to the bustling city of Dublin, as Gemma needs to make a quick visit home, leaving me to fend for myself as I stealth camp my way around the city streets of Dublin. Oh, all alone. If you're new around here and want to see more of van life in Ireland, then hit subscribe and join the gang. But for now, let's get stuck into another week of adventures in Ireland. Good morning everyone. You join us from the beautiful little banks of Loch Derg. We've basically been chilling out here for the past couple of days because it's such a peaceful little spot. Like honestly, there's a little car park here. No one seems to mind us parking up here. There's a toilet block, there's waste disposal. There's even a hot shower, which I think is for the boating marina nearby. But the hot water seemed to actually work without the use of a key card. So I thought I'd try my luck and again, no one seemed to mind. We've been basically chilling out here for the past couple of days, just kind of behind our laptops, eating healthy food, getting some exercise in and trying to find a bit of balance after the manic last month of us racing down the western coast. And today we're heading all the way east because Gemma's got a flight in a couple of days and we're heading across to Dublin because we just love that city so much and we're so excited to get back over there again. All right, you ready? You know... Your favourite bit. <laughs> I'm like the sweatiest human ever. Come on, get those toes wet. It's because, like, am I just going to just go underwater when I jump in here? No, no, I wasn't planning stand motion I'm standing up. Is that just so I can't see your face? Can you show me how you got in? Right, hold on, guys. I just need to give Gemma a swimming lesson. Okay, kids, this is how you get in a pool safely. Sitting down, and you turn yourself around and lower yourself down. Like that. Okay, do you want another demonstration? You got it? I can't. My feet slip. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was graceful. <laughs> it's one way to get into the water. I'm pretty sure that's not what I showed you how to do. Don't do that, kids. That's not how you get into water. From here, we began the long journey across the central belt of Ireland to the bustling city of Dublin, eager to return to this cultural hub and spend a day of exploring its vibrant city streets and quaint pubs. We managed to find a parking ride just outside of the city centre that was perfect for leaving the van and catching a tram into the city. Before we left, however, we decided to max out our security precautions for peace of mind whilst we were away from home. When you read one review about someone trying to break in, the van turns into Fort Knox. So just before we head into Dublin, I just wanted to chat to you guys about a very useful tool that we have been using when planning our trip all across Ireland, and that is the app Readly, which is also the sponsor of today's video. Readly is an app with over 7,000 titles of magazines and newspapers of all different kinds, all available right in the palm of your hand. It literally has something for everyone and is a one-stop destination for any subject that you could ask for, from travel to fashion, health and fitness, to even weddings, which is Gemma's recent obsession, like I swear she's even been taking the iPad into the shower so that it's you can actually flick through and read these things. It has been a great space saver for us when we've been traveling around as it means we don't need to actually like, hold on to tons and tons of magazines and newspapers and guidebooks because we all have it available right on our iPad and we can even download the magazines offline. So for example, when we we're coming over on the ferry, we downloaded a bunch of stuff, meant we could sit and plan our trip whilst we were getting the ferry over and we didn't have any signal. So if you want to give Readly a shot for yourself to plan your trips this summer, I'll put a little link on the screen right here and I'll also put a QR code, you can scan it. You'll get the first two months for free and you can cancel at any time so it's completely risk-free. Whilst going through the magazines I found some pretty cool activities that we could do all across our island road trip which we've already done a lot of them so far such as the Cliffs of Moher and today we're heading into Dublin for one very exciting activity and we're going to go and check that out now. As you guys might remember last time we tried to come to Dublin and explore, we didn't have the best experience with trying to park up overnight. I don't know man, it just feels, feels a little bit dodgy. This time we've decided to just go for it. Ellie has well and truly become Fort Knox since last time. We have installed every security feature we could possibly think of. We've got both wheel clamps on, we've got our internal security camera on, we've got everything packed away safely. We've got a dead bolt on the door and we've got an alarm system and an immobiliser set up so if anyone tries to take her, we'll know about it. If you're wanting to store anything securely, just hit us up, we'll put her inside Ellie. No one's getting to her. So we've parked up at the red car rent about Louis tram stop. We did read some dodgy reviews online so we've proper made Ellie like Fort Knox and now we're going to head into town and go and find somewhere to watch the rugby. <laughs> Thank you. 
After a quick wander around the city streets, soaking up the atmosphere and taking in the sights, we went on a hunt for a spot of food and stumbled across the delicious vegan burger bar, The Saucy Cow. With a quirky interior and fully vegan menu, this spot is definitely somewhere that we would recommend if you're looking for an off-the-wall eatery in the heart of Dublin. And I always forget just how good the veggie and vegan scene is here in Dublin. That place is called the Saucy Cow and they did the tastiest burgers. Now, honestly, last time we were here as well, we went to some kind of Moroccan place, wasn't it? Had falafel. And we also went to a vegan bakery. Like it's expensive, £32 for two burgers and two drinks with fries. But the food is just amazing in Dublin. So the activity that we have planned to finish off our time here in Dublin, as I said, is one that we actually read on our Readly app. Now this is one of the main reasons why we love Readly so much, because it means that while we're offline, we can actually plan our trips to a really good amount of depth. Like there's so much to read in it. And this is one that I saw in the app and I was just like, that looks amazing. I definitely need to go and check that out. As I say, guys, if you do want the first two months of Readly free, just use a URL put it here and put a little QR code here for you because you can get two months free and you can cancel at any time but seriously when you give it a shot I don't think you'll need to worry about that. The activity that we're doing Gemma still has no idea what to expect. So are you excited? I am. I have what are you no expecting? Idea. I don't know I mean you told me to wear comfortable shoes so I'm expecting walking. Oh. It's been a while since we've done one of these surprises. Oh, no. Actually, I think the engagement might have been the last time that yeah. you did something like this. But we used to always do this with each other, like when we were living in London, or even when we were at home for Campbell's birthday last year, we'd like plan these little adventures for each other. And it's just like so exciting not actually knowing. <laughs> oh, you're kidding. No <laughs> way. No way. So I thought last time we were in Dublin was a rather frightful experience um, and I wanted to kind of compound on that and I thought you love new challenging experiences don't you? I do. Apparently I love putting my pants too. Yeah I know. Never mind bringing good trainers. I hope you brought a spare pair of pants. Well I didn't actually unfortunately she <laughs> didn't warn me. So ghost bus tour. Here we go. A little bit terrified. I'm thinking it looks like it's going to be pitch black in there. I can see it's all like blacked windows. Possibly going to be complete darkness. And oh, I'm expecting somebody to jump out on me. If we remember the last time we were in Dublin, Campbell, what? we did not cope very well with the things jumping out at us. <laughs> this is the worst thing I've ever done in my life. start. Yeah. That's why I said you should go first. The tour took us on a drive around the city telling us the haunting tales of how the plague ravaged the city of Dublin and it even stopped off at some of the spots that to this day have a more supernatural story to tell. It was overall a fascinating blend of dark history and light-hearted education that we would highly recommend if you were interested in the not so rose tinted past of the city of Dublin. And of course in true Irish style the tour even ended up at a famous pub for a chance to top up on some liquid courage. What a night out! We are all bat batting down in the van. How was that? Do you know, it was actually really, really good. I really enjoyed it. It wasn't as... Well, okay, I got a real fright when we first got on the bus. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> but after that, I was kind of expecting it to be like that the whole way, but I actually felt like I could like handle my fear. Did you think that as yeah, well? Yeah, I think so. Like, I, well, I, there was a couple of things. I won't give it away in case anyone wants to do it. A couple of things that didn't make me jump, but... I really enjoyed it and it was actually really interesting to learn about all the kind of like spooky history as well. Ooh, and I need to try and sleep and not have any nightmares. I know, you're going home <laughs> tomorrow Ooh. and you're going to go and stay in a big house all by yourself. Enjoy that. Fantastic. And there it is. That's where I'll need to be bright and early tomorrow morning. So we're heading somewhere nearby to find a place to park up for the night. And uh, I think my flight is about 8am. I've just taken a backpack with me, so I don't need to be there too early, but still the earliest flight I've been on in a while. I do believe that there's a place just along the road from here that I've read on park for a night. It's apparently a little petrol station that people have said it's quite good for overnighting the night before you need to get back to the airport. We just park here, we can have some dinner, and then later on I'll just pop in and say to them, do you mind if I just stay and spend the night? It's pretty ideal actually because there's car washes right there and it's quite far back from the main road so it shouldn't be too noisy either. So hopefully it's a good little spot. Nobody. 
Oh, it's a beautiful morning. Oh, it's going on back there. Okay, terminal 1. Here we go. Always nerve wracking bringing a motorhome to an airport. Not very motorhome friendly. Oh, I don't know. You're just ready to grab your bag and run, I guess. Uh, I mean, do you want it to jump out now? Okay. Yeah, love you. Mm, love you, baby. Yes, okay. right. Love you. Bye. Right, bye bye. Oh, all alone. Oh dear. Bye. So, we're on the road. Second solo van life road trip. It's always me left in the van. So the plan now is I've got a park up that sits just to the south of Dublin. I'm gonna go and check that out because it looks really secluded, just outside the city centre, right by the sea, and it might be the perfect place to kind of just base myself until I need to go and pick up Gemma in two days' time. I do have a lot to do over the next couple of days, such as just more van renovation work and going out and exploding around the local area. So it's gonna be a good couple of days, I think. I need to keep myself busy. Forget how big and lonely a place this van can actually be. I could just park here. So this is where we're I'm gonna be parking. I keep saying we, it's not we, it's me. This is where I'm gonna be parking, I think for the next couple of days, to be honest. I've read online, it's pretty decent, um, nice and quiet, overlooking his harbour, really peaceful, and hopefully I shouldn't have actually have any problems here because the road seems very peaceful and quiet. on toast for breakfast. I did actually mean to tell you guys before that we did manage to get gas. We finished off the last episode talking about how we were running out of gas, we had to go and find somewhere. And last time we were in Ireland, we weren't entirely sure whether we could get gas, calor gas bottles that is, in Ireland because they're from the UK. Well, it turns out you can. It just says it's a little more complicated. Basically what I had to do was go onto the calor.ie website, then find stockists, and then you can actually filter it whether you want six kilogram bottles of propane, 11 kilograms, no matter what size you want basically. And that tells you exactly where the nearest retailer is, which is really handy if you are visiting Ireland, just know that you can exchange calor bottles. Why does our bread keep going mouldy? Oh, it's breakfast ruined. I do have a cheeky little backup option though. Leftover veggie bacon. Sorry Gemma. Desperate times, desperate measures. So, the main thing that I wanted to achieve whilst Gemma was actually at home and I had more space in the van was getting the vinyl renovation done inside Ellie. As you guys know, before we came to Ireland, I actually spent two days completely redoing the entire front of the van, vinyling all the walls, taking off the cupboards, putting rattan onto them as well, and I'm really happy with how it's turned out. There's just a little bit left to do on the back corner of the van, which I've been really putting off because I need to basically take the entire bed out in order to get in at it. So I've got that door there to do. I'm gonna to need to take that picture off the wall. I've got this wall here, all of that to do and then basically all along the top of the cupboards and here. I then also need to do the entire worktop because we've got like a kind of marble finish which we've put on the back sink and we want to put that on the kitchen top as well. First things first though, let's get some music going. Oh yeah. Driving through West Virginia. Okay, here goes nothing. And yeah, this is why I decided to wait until Gemma had left before I got stuck into making it work. It's lunchtime and I have no idea how I'm going to cook any food. The place is an absolute bombshell. So 
Ta -da. That's still to get done. But to be honest, I can't really be bothered moving the picture frames. So I reckon I'll just leave that as it is. You don't really notice it. I've got one more thing to do, which is a countertop and try and decide what I'm going to be putting on the fridge. We've got this marble work, which I'm going to put on the countertop or just the plain white. I'm kind of going more towards the marble, just to add a little bit of texture against all the like white surfaces. But I've got it open anyway, so I may as well use it and then just try and like see what I prefer when it's actually in place. That looks good. I think it's because it's going to be the first thing you see when you walk into the van. So, trim the edges and then I think we're done. Oh, just like that, we're finished. It's very hot in here and this road is like so busy. So I've had to lose the top because I can't open any windows in case cars start tooting at me for blocking the road. But we got there. Look at this. I just put white on that. Nice new marble countertop. Oh, she just looks so much brighter. Like, honestly, so much brighter already. I can't believe it, I'm buzzing. I'm actually having major flashbacks to last time Gemma left me when she was away in a Hindu and I was in Lisbon and I found that perfect little harbour where I parked up for a couple of days and it was just like right on the water's edge so quiet and so peaceful this one's a little bit busier but wow that view is just like stunning it's very much a boys night in I've got my garlic bread stone baked margarita pizza I've still got a little bit of work to do so I'm on the Heineken 0% for this entire trip. Oh yeah, I reckon I'll just watch a movie or something, chill out, enjoy that view, and it's a big day again tomorrow. So slag about everyone. Good morning everyone. I actually had a really good sleep last night despite being not on a proper busy road during the day. It was very quiet between about midnight and about 6 a.m. and then the car started all coming past. So I'm up a little bit earlier than usual, but this place is just so peaceful. Like the seagulls are all just starting to wake up as well. And as more and more people are coming down to the harbor, it's starting to like come to life. Yeah, very good spot. Today's plans, I want to get out and do some movement because yesterday I was pretty much just inside the van all day long doing renovations and behind the laptop. So I'm trying to decide whether I just take my skipping ropes down over to that harbour over there, do a little skip. But yeah, just a slow van life start to the day today I think. Try and figure out what to do when I'm all by myself. So when I was driving to this park up, I actually went through this tiny little town called Del Quay, which looked very cute, kind of quaint little cobbled streets and beautiful churches. Sun's shining, I thought it's a perfect time to get out, go a little wander and go and see what it's all about. Oh, look who's calling me. Hello. Hi. How are you? Yeah, good, thanks, how are you? Oh my goodness! Is that what I think it is? How's that look? Yeah, it looks really, really, really good. Oh my god, that looks so good. Buzzing! Okay, chat to you later. Yeah, Right, love you, bye bye. So yeah, that right there was something very, very exciting. Basically, 
Gemma just received the proofs of our brand new North Coast map, which means we can actually finally see it in person and do all the kind of final checks that we need to do to it before it goes to printing. Now this is a map that's des designed to pair up with our Destination NC500 book, showing you all of the best sites around the route. Hotels, restaurants, camper van facilities, electric vehicle points, basically everything that you need to know in order to plan your own North Coast 500 adventure. And it went live on our website two days ago, and honestly, since then, the response has just been like insane. I cannot believe how many of you have actually put your faith in us and kind of pre-ordered before the actual launch. We are so grateful for it. It means that we actually have a little bit of funding to pay for the printing of the first batch. And it, is ju it just shows the initial interest in it and like we're kind of lost for words. Like, if you've already pre-ordered one, thank you so much. Hopefully by the time this video goes out, we'll be so close to actually getting them ready and getting them sent out to you because we're hoping end of August at the latest beginning of September. But yeah, it's just like, so so very exciting it's kind of months of hard work starting to come to fruition and start to come to a conclusion and it's just always so rewarding when that finally happens all right time to go pick up Gemma I can't wait I'm coming baby oh I see you oh. hello I got anything Oh, she looks so bright. I know. Oh. Right. Yes. How are you? Oh, good. Oh, good. Ellie is looking good from what I can see. Yeah, what are your first impressions? Bright. I walked into the van and I was like, oof, wow. Like, she's looking bright. She's looking so good. Well done. You've also brought back a couple of very exciting things. What's that? A stress trying to fit it all in my bag. I have, so it's just the proofs. So that's like the kind of cover proofs. Um, this is a map. How amazing does that, that look? That looks so good. This has been a long time coming and um, so much work has gone into this and our assistant Shiva has just been unreal. And um, we're so pleased with it and we're so happy that it's finally gonna be out there and you are gonna know get to use it to plan your trips. And as well as that, one of the other reasons I was very excited for Gemma to fly home and pick something up is something that we announced a couple of weeks ago, but I've not actually seen it in person yet. So this is it, like this is the big one for me. It's something I've been working on since about January of this year. And that is our brand new clothing line, Nomad Threads. Okay. Do you wanna hold something up? Yeah. This one, long sleeve t-shirt, little logo here. We'll go on the back. You've that been working really so hard good. on this, so I'm so pleased with it. And then I've got a little jumper too. That's cute. Ooh, ooh. Oh, I sand. like this logo too, this sand one. Like yeah, that. so if, so in the design for Nomad Threads, we've either gone like simple, kind of minimalist, like black and white logos, or a little bit more detailed, all about van life and adventure and everything like that. I'm so pleased with how they're actually looking in print. It's just like really kind of cool to see a design that you've come up with actually on a t-shirt. And with that, we are hitting the road again. We are going to be heading back west where we are going to be heading to Dingle and exploring the Dingle Peninsula where we're going to be on the hunt for a local celebrity. So if you're interested in seeing that, then make sure you hit subscribe, tune in next week and give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Thank you as always for watching and all your support and we'll see you next week.